To get to Reedy Glacier, scientists on the Reedy Glacier research team first fly into the U.S. base at McMurdo Station. Then they pack their equipment and supplies into a small plane that takes them out to the glacier where they unpack their gear, set up their campsite, and settle in for a month or more investigating the history of Reedy Glacier. The days at Reedy Glacier are long ones for the scientists. When we go to work in the morning, first of all, we've been living in a tent. And so we're, we get up, it's cold, we have to get out of our warm sleeping bags and then make our way over to the cook tent. The first one in starts the, co the stove and the coffee and the tea. And, and um, so we have breakfast, we have to call in to uh, the U.S. base to you know, just basically make sure that they know we're still alive and to oh, schedule Charlie, any Charlie. flights or anything we might need. Most of our day involves pretty continuous walking for 12, 14 hours, and we're looking for things. We're looking to see what types of deposits are, are on the ground, how they're arranged, what their shape and morphology are, how badly weathered they are. I guess things we're looking at range from glacial deposits that may be a few hundred, a few thousand years old, to things that are a few million years old or more. A typical day for us is quite long. We carry a lot of gear, uh, particularly uh, uh, me and, and the student who's working with me, uh, end up having to carry sledgehammers and, and barometers and GPS receivers and all sorts of things like that. So we load ourselves up with about, uh, uh, well, 20, 30 pounds of equipment each before we even start collecting rocks. For us, uh, the, the process of working uh, consists of, of collecting rock samples. Sometimes it's a rock we can just pick up and put in the backpack, but other times we then have, we would have to take a sledgehammer to, uh, um, to break it. It doesn't get dark at Reedy Glacier when we're there because it's, it's summer, and so you have to keep your eye on, keep your, eye on your watch and um, on your stomach as well because you have to go home at some point, but because it never gets dark, you never think, well, it's, it's time to pack up and go to bed. So we would tend to get home at about 7 o'clock, sometimes as late as 10 o'clock in the evening, but um, usually about 7. And one of us would go out and collect ice. You just, you hit it with an ice axe and it shatters and you collect all the pieces up, put them in a bucket, and you start melting that for... Uh, for cooking water and for tea and coffee and such like. And, um, and then we'd start making dinner. And uh, we'd probably call it a day, about 11 o'clock at night. And you'd go back to your tent, and inside it would be, the tent is yellow, and so with the sun streaming through all night long, you'd be sleeping in this yellow, uh, yellow environment, which is a lot easier than it sounds. And that's a typical day.